Thank you, ma'am. I'm, t- I'm Secretary of State Trey Hargett. Today is Thursday, August 17, 2023. And today we're discussing the Tennessee Quarterly Business and Economic Indicators Report for the second quarter of 2023. The report is published through a partnership between our office and Dr. Don Bruce at the University of Tennessee Knoxville's Boyd Center for Business and Economic Research. This report offers a snapshot of the state's economy based on business data from the Division of Business and Charitable Organizations. Let me make a few observations here. <clears throat> Tennessee experienced the highest number of business filings for a second quarter in the 25 year history of the data. In the second quarter of 2023, 19,996 new entities filed in Tennessee. This 1.4% year over year growth in new business filings shows that businesses continue to establish in Tennessee at high rates, and they're building on the elevated levels of filings that began in 2020. Traditionally, a high level of business filings leads to more jobs, personal income, and state revenue. All are growing in Tennessee. Over the past year, 77,044 new businesses filed, and employment increased by 84,600 jobs. The largest number of filings in the second quarter were in Davidson and Shelby counties, followed by Knox and Hamilton counties. Tennessee's four most populous counties accounted for 44.5 percent of new filings statewide and grew 1.1 percent over the past year. Notably, Knox County business filings expanded rapidly, growing by a robust 58.4 percent year over year for the second quarter. Knox County filings have grown the fastest among the four largest counties in each of the last six quarters, and the county has one of the fastest growing populations in the state. I'm also pleased to note Tennessee's unemployment rate in June matches all-time low at 3.2%, which is below the national rate of 3.6%. We'll take questions momentarily, but first I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Bruce. Thank you, Dr. Bruce. And thank you, Secretary Hargett. It's always a pleasure to join you on these calls. And uh, I think we're really fortunate now with these new data to continue to be facing what I think of as a glass more than half full scenario. Uh, The bottom line here is the U.S. economy continues to stabilize and the national recession risk continues to fall with each passing month. Um, Tennessee very proudly continues to lead the United States on the continued high levels of new firm registrations and solid uh, performance of renewals of existing firms really are signs of continued strength of our state's economy. Uh, Real U.S. GDP growing at around 2.6% on an annual basis. Uh, Tennessee inflation adjusted personal income up by about 3.6% on an annual basis. Those are very stable, good, positive rates of economic growth. The Tennessee labor market remains very strong. Um, We added nearly 85,000 jobs to the state economy in the past 12 months, and our annual growth is on par with the U.S. at 2.6%. We've really added almost 200,000 jobs. It's about 175,000 jobs since the pre-pandemic peak in February 2020. And unemployment, as you mentioned, Secretary, tying a record low at 3.2%. None of these would be indicating uh, a recession or anything like it. Um, What we have, though, is um, alongside very strong economic growth and strong labor market demand, we have uh, a slight decline in labor force participation, which is giving us a pretty significant labor shortage, despite the fact that we have so many more people working in Tennessee now than before the pandemic. We continue to have growth in job openings at a very, very high rate, such that we have about two times as many job openings in Tennessee right now as we have unemployed people who could take those jobs. And what that's giving us is upward pressure on wages. And so far, we have not seen that translate into out of control inflation. And so on a closing note there, inflation nationally does remain uh, too high for comfort. We're, we've come down dramatically from those 8 and 9% rates a year ago, now around 3% inflation, which is really good progress and a sign that the Federal Reserve's monetary policy has been very effective at engineering uh, what we'd like to see as a soft landing in the economy. We still like to see that inflation come down to around 2%, and we expect that will happen here over the next year or so. Uh, and rate increases to be replaced, hopefully in 2024 with some rate reductions. But all things considered, as I started, I'll say it again, it's a glass more than half full in Tennessee, much to be uh, excited about with the strength of the state economy. Thank you, Dr. Bruce. And now we'd like to open it up for questions. Please say your name and where you're from. 
I, this is Dave Fluster with the Chattanooga Times Free Press. Is there comparative data or how would you, Tennessee's initial business startups and filings, compare with the U.S. in terms of this last 12-month period? Yeah, I think what we've seen, uh, I appreciate that question, Dave. Thank you. Uh, what we've seen in Tennessee is much stronger rates of, of new firm formation. That being said, the national picture has been very strong since the pandemic. I think what, what we saw in 2020 uh, and 2021 was a, a, a real uh, growth in the entrepreneurial spirit in the United States. Uh, I'm comfortable in saying that Tennessee has led that. The rate of job formation, or sorry, the rate of new firm formation has exceeded most other states during these period during this period of time. It's really been unprecedented in Tennessee and is indicative of the strength of the underlying economy. I don't have uh, hard data for you to say that we're first or twelfth or, or eighth in the country, but uh, I, I know with confidence that we're in the, in the select top group of states when it comes to new firm formation nationwide. Uh, yes, Dr. Bruce, uh, Richard Lovett at WJCW Radio in Johnson City, Tri-Cities. Uh, what is your outlook for the rest of 2023 as we uh, move into the uh, midway through the third and into the fourth quarter? Thanks for that question. Um, we are in the process in the next month or two of updating our state forecast, but our preliminary conversations really are um, being buoyed by continued strong performance of the national and state job market and the, and the success of Federal Reserve monetary policy when it comes to inflation. So our outlook is very good. Uh, I would say, if anything, we were going to come up a little bit from our most recent economic forecast, such that Tennessee's rate of growth in the economy will continue to exceed the U.S through the remainder of 2023 and on into 2024 as well. Um, the risk of recession nationally, I would place at uh, no more than one fourth. Uh, I really do feel like uh, all signs are good and it would really take something unusual and unexpected to tip this economy into a recession at this point. And a quick follow-up question, uh, since the state is so heavily reliant on sales tax uh, collections, uh, do you see those remaining strong as well? Yes, I think uh, strong is a good word there. I think our rate of growth of sales tax collections has finally come back to earth following a couple of years of back-to-back -back really, really high rates of growth, double-digit growth in sales tax collections. A couple of things that are really important here. Sales taxes are a function of not only how much we buy, but what the prices are. So as inflation goes up, so do sales tax collections. So the slowdown that we've seen in the growth rates of sales tax collections have really been driven almost entirely by controlling that inflation rate. Uh, the underlying demand for the number of goods, the quantity side of things, has been very strong. Uh, that being said, the, the, great, the rates of growth we saw in 21 and 22 were simply unsustainable. That's what we've been telling the state fairly consistently. Uh, another important feature in, in Tennessee that's not unlike most other states that uh, rely heavily on the sales tax is this state uh, very successfully made some important policy changes uh, just before the pandemic that really have allowed um, purchases to be treated more uniformly across the state, regardless of how we make that purchase. And I, I refer specifically to remote purchases or out of state purchases, typically things we buy online. Now those taxes are being collected and remitted to the state on behalf of Tennessee and to make those purchases. And those dollars are making their way into the residents uh, areas, the jurisdictions where those buyers live. And those things have really helped to shore up sales tax collections throughout this pandemic period. We do expect things to continue to return to normal, long run, sustainable rates of growth. Um, but again, I'll come back to your word. It remains strong and I don't see any change in that in the near term future. This is Dave Fluster with the Trans Free Press. Just to follow up, uh, it, what would be your explanation why you think Tennessee is doing better than the nation as a whole? Well, Tennessee is the best state in the country. I'll just start with that. Uh, I'll steal Secretary Hargett's line. He probably wanted to say that first. But it really is a very pro-business uh, environment right now in terms of our regulatory environment and our tax environment. I should also say that uh, the, one of the pandemic effects has been a great reshuffling of people around the country. And as folks are looking up from their very high cost of living areas and trying to think about where they might be happier, they're looking very favorably upon Tennessee right now and in the last couple of years. You know, one downside of that we might see as a downside is this uh, dramatic growth in real estate prices as new uh, entrants to that marketplace have really pushed up uh, sale prices and rents in our real estate markets. But those rates of growth are starting to come back to normal as well. 
Um, but really, it's just a, it's a great place to be and a great place to do business. And I think the rest of the world and the rest, certainly the rest of the country has finally figured that out. Well, if I can, I don't think I can say it much better than that. The politician in me makes me want to try. <laughs> Thank you for laughing at that. So, you know, obviously people want, to be, people want to be here in Tennessee. They recognize that they can enjoy a lifestyle of greater freedom and liberty, and their, their dollar goes farther. In fact, one of the, the things that Dr. Bruce and his predecessor, Dr. Fox, and I have talked about for many years is that uh, the average purchasing power of a Tennessee and is, is roughly 10 to 11 percent more than that of the average citizen of the United States. So, you know, not, not only do you enjoy a greater lifestyle here from a freedom and liberty standpoint, you know, you also economically enjoy a better lifestyle because your dollar goes farther here. So that's one reason why people want to live here and, you know, people to start businesses where they can know that they're going to enjoy that lifestyle. 